Hi, Gary Hoover here. Uh, today I want to talk about wisdom. A friend of mine was starting a business, an online idea, and he was going to have wisdom on there. And I said, oh gosh, what is wisdom? I don't, to me it's like a holy grail. It's something you strive for and you never achieve. Or I don't know, very few people really have wisdom. But it started me thinking about it. And given I teach entrepreneurship classes and stuff, I said, well, what, what, what are we really trying to achieve here? And so, uh, uh, you can start out, you can say, well, what we really take in all around us is data, little bits of stuff we put together. We kind of form it into groups, and it becomes information. You know, if you look at, uh, oh, how hot is it today? And then you say, and they take another level and say, yeah, but it's been hot for three weeks, so it'll probably be hot for another week, you know. And sooner or later, you acknowledge, man, well, it's hot every summer, you know, whatever, down here in beautiful Austin, Texas. And, and, and at some point, wisdom, like, uh, Wear your shades. I don't know. There is this evolutionary flow. We move down this, this list. And so I've worked up a working definition of wisdom. Maybe you'll find it helpful. Certainly, I hope it provokes your thinking. Because all these kind of things, it's not a matter of knowing the answers and being definitive so much as it is a journey of learning and ever-growing and ever-questing, ever-questioning. So I've come down at wisdom is three things. It's first of all knowing what matters. Now that's not an easy thing, okay? It's simple for me to say. It's probably simple to understand. But it's very difficult to actually know and you really got to work at it. Actually, I think it's parallel. I once heard that somebody say that a great game, I don't care if it's uh, uh, checkers or uh, Monopoly or whatever bridge, it's very, very simple to understand the rules and it's incredibly hard to master, you know? So kind of parallel to that. Knowing what matters. Second thing is knowing what changes. Because what I, what I notice is not enough people are paying attention to the patterns of change. What's rising? What's falling? What's growing faster? What's growing slower? What's gaining market share? In a business world, we kind of touch on it peripherally, but as far as really doing a deep dive and really focused, I mean, if you come up to me and say, oh, my company did 41 million in sales last year, you really haven't told me much. The minute you say against 22 the prior year or against 70 the prior year, then I'm learning something. And then the other thing that I would throw in is knowing what you can change. Okay? You can change. Because um, there are things that change that you can't change. Demographics changes all the time. You can't change it. Human nature uh, probably doesn't change, and you can't change it. But uh, having somebody, and you know it's been said, it's not what happens to you in life, it's how you react to it. And this is very much in tune with that. How, how, can you do anything about this? Can you take steps that will make it better or not? I mean, if it's totally out of your control, what are you wasting your time screaming about it? Again, that still maybe is not easy. You may say, oh, the banker turned me down on a loan. It's totally out of my control. I'll go shoot myself or whatever. I've been there before, you know, uh, as an entrepreneur. Well, maybe I can change it. Maybe I can talk to the banker again. Maybe I can go to another bank. So all these things are tricky. But I think the closer you can get to knowing what matters, knowing what changes, and knowing what you can change, uh, the better off you're going to be. I want one last story on that, knowing what matters. Uh, it was just in the, this last weekend's Wall Street Journal, a big article by Bob Lutz, L-U-T-Z, who was one of the great visionaries of the American auto industry the last few years. I know they didn't have a whole lot, but he was one of the greats. And he starts with this big, long story about how the head of General Motors back in the 50s or 60s spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours perfecting their Christmas card, the Cadillac Christmas card. Even to the point he said, well, the treads in the snow on the Christmas card that the Cadillac Made. Those aren't what the real trade marks look like. Let's get the tire experts in. Let's get that fixed. The guy didn't know what mattered. And as Bob Lutz points out, uh, he was so caught up in detail in his own ego, he became CEO of General Motors. So then the whole company doesn't know what matters. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, I love General Motors. I grew up in the GM town. I just wish they had had better leadership for about 30 or 40 years there. Anyway, that's my two bits for today. Hopefully you found it interesting. Talk to you soon.